Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Hi, welcome to Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. And today I'll be talking to Jamie Abramovitz from Dreamalings. I hope I got the name right. Perfect. Uh, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so tell us um, a little bit about your background, Jamie, and, and uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about your background. So um, I was raised in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, it's the nice tan. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just got back. <laughs> five degrees already um, and I grew up uh, I was categorized as a mainstream child during those times we didn't really talk about dyslexia and ADD and ADHD and learning challenge and disabilities and so on um, but I had a lot of silent struggles um, learning and, and, and going to classes and paying attention and focusing and I had a lot of hyperactivity issues and attention deficit and dyslexia and all kinds of things that went unnoticed and so I had to learn my own coping skills. And that uh, was really the springboard for the entire rest of my life. Uh, and, and this particular project, the Dreamlings as well. So um, as I was going through school, I would find ways to turn the, the reading materials and, and, and the math and everything into fun rhymes and rhythms and do musical rhythms in my head to remember facts and history and so on. And as I went through uh, high school and I went to college at UC San Diego and, and then I went abroad overseas and I lived uh, about, I don't know, eight years overseas in, in about eight different countries. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. It's fun and, um, to be overseas. Yeah. And, um, mm. you know, it's funny because the, the kids that are mainstream even today that have learning issues that go unnoticed, you know, their hidden needs. Uh, follow them all through their entire lives. So that's what happened to me. I was overseas. I was working for multinational corporations. I got my MBA. I learned six languages. I was very blessed to have found those coping methods uh, to get me through life. And after I worked at Intel Corporation, I, um, I left in about 2001 after some years and started the Dreamalings company. And uh, that was basically translating everything that I had done before, uh, you know, when I was young, into products to help children learn today, that children that are also considered mainstream or have, you know, hidden learning challenges. So that's how Dreamalings came about in 2001, then it was, so was it an idea you just came up with then, or how did it, how did it actually form in 2001? Well, uh, I was actually visiting a friend of mine, and her child uh, had hyperactivity issues and tension deficit problems, and and uh, he was trying to read a book and I started to sing the words in the book to him and he was getting it and I thought I had these flashbacks to when I was young and I thought and how creative who would have thought to, to sing the book to him right right, right. So. and and those are and then I realized he was an auditory learner like I was and I had learned these coping skills being an auditory learner um, and so we started to sing the material to him and then we'd come up with rhyme and rhythm so he could memorize his math tables and um, and then I, I almost became a tutor to this friend of mine's child and realized that he had the same problems I had. And I thought, you know, there must be, you know, I had an inkling that there must be many, many children with the same kinds of issues. And so I started to create products. So I took the book that he was reading and made it into a movie book. And um, I, I invested my own money and I went and hired music artists, musical, uh, musically talented people, artists and graphic designers and we created this video book and that was the first step into the Dreamalink series of products. So um, the video books is one element and then you have software elements and different high tech learning tools. Tell us a little bit about that. Yep. So what we ended up doing after this personal experience I had on my own and then with my, my friend's child is we started doing pilot testing with our first video book uh, in school systems and we realized that lo and behold about 80 percent of the children in the classrooms really took to this new form of learning and, and this is really a trend now that's catching on um, 
not only in classrooms but in homes. Parents are starting to realize that they need to supplement what's going on in the classroom and in the school districts at home and use these kinds of, basically embrace the new technology that's available to them today um, and utilize it for education and learning. And what we decided to do was integrate the art and music, which were the core elements of helping these children learn, um, into the what they call now the STEMs, right? Which is you know science, technology, and engineering and mathematics. And realize that art, music, creativity, and all these kinds of uh, uh, cultural, um, I want to say. Uh, paradigms that we can bring into the learning process for children help them have context and help them learn and grow and and really feel empowered and comfortable and spawn their creativity like I've never seen. So now you do you have children? I, I don't have children but I work with millions of children around the world and I feel like they're all somehow I'm related to all of them. So again the, the idea came to you you know explain a little bit more how you actually came from the idea now to having these products I guess. Yeah okay right so um, so what we ended up doing was uh, we started to use uh, both auditory and visual forms of learning right so we um, integrated the art and music and we complement what we did was we took how can I explain this we took what children were learning in preschool uh, kindergarten and first grade for early childhood development and this is all you or did you have people helping you develop these products so I um, I I had help from Stanford, Harvard, and Cornell, early childhood Some development very prestigious experts. prestigious places. We wanted to make the best learning system for children that exists in the world, if at all possible. And so I, we went and I went and I recruited these uh, directors of education of their departments, um, early childhood development specialists, psychologists, uh, music therapists, color therapists, incredible minds, right? We got the best of the best on our board. And then we went and dealt, we, we wanted to delve into what children were currently learning in school. So, you know, the sight words and the vocabulary and the preschool and, and kindergarten, first grade curriculum and, um, and learning English and literacy. And then we wanted to integrate the art and the music element into that. And so what we did was we took a creative spin on the books and we turned all the books into mini movies. I mean, what child doesn't love to watch movies, and right? And so how many books then, I guess I should ask? Um, we started with 12 books. 12, wow. Yeah, we started Right with, off the back, 12. Well, no, we started with one book. Okay. And I started a, a publishing company with one book and uh, sold it through Barnes and & Nobles and uh, Borders and major retail chains and we had a certain degree of success. And so we came up with another book and then I, and I consulted with these early childhood development experts who said, you know, what you should really focus on is creating a character group that basically guides the child through the learning process with the books that they can identify with. And so then we created 12 characters which then spawned the 12 books in the series. Well your graphics are amazing and maybe we can pull up some of those slides mm -hmm. now with the graphics and um, here's, here's some of the graphics here. This was one of our early books uh, for the preschool uh, contingent, Sweet Dreams. A lot of the mothers were, were telling us they were having problems getting their children to bed at night. So, yeah, go to the next one if you ahead. want. Yeah, this is great. This is the second one, the Dreamer book, the banana phone, uses humor for uh, kindergarten children. And you can go to the next one. And the magic wand was uh, more for the first grade children, used a little bit more advanced words and sight, vocabulary and sight words. Again, and these graphics um, are amazing. And let's take one more slide. Let's go to the next one. Yep, and that's, uh, you can see on the right, that's our book series. Okay, so now these graphics here, um, you have, you said that you have a core of people that helped you, Cornell, Harvard. How many people helped you all together, your board or whoever, and then from that group, is that who did the graphics for you, or? Um, I actually, so it started as me, <laughs> trying yeah. to solve a problem, right, as you know. Um, and then I went and recruited the academicians who were extremely useful in helping us understand how to integrate and all the elements of early childhood development. Um, and then I went and hired a team of graphic designers and artists and illustrators from around the world. And they're beautiful graphics. Thank again. you so, so much. Yeah. I, the credit yeah. goes to our artists and illustrators. I, I, was, I had the vision and we worked on it numerous hours and we finally came up with something original. And, I had originally gone to Disney and DreamWorks and got in and looked for you know something similar to their style and ended up with Disney and DreamWorks kinds of you know graphics 
And so then I went to Savannah College of Art and Design. And Is that Savannah, Georgia then? Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Brilliant, amazing young people coming out of that school. And we recruited some of the artists from there. Mm 